Hello everyone, it's your Sally Coach, and we will be doing the Niles Cryptanalysis Cypher to prepare you all for the state tournament. Now, this cypher will not be run at the invitational level, but I have seen it come on the regional test before, even though it's not allowed. So it is important to know this cypher to be best prepared. One last thing before we start is that I want to make sure that you watch my earlier video on the Nihilus cypher, which is shown on the screen right now. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we can see is that it tells us that 54, 45, 105, 65 decoded to be DAWA. So we're going to go out and fill that out. So 54 right here, D, A, W, A. That's what we know. So next, what we're going to do is go to our keyword. So the first thing we want to do for our keyword is to figure out the range of characters in our keyword. So we're going to be trying to do a range between a 4 to 12 letters. So we do that because that's around the range of the keywords that we're going to be getting. Now, I'm doing this for our keyword, not our Polybius keyword. Make sure to know that. So since some of these numbers in this range are too large, so we're trying to go from 4 to 12, since some of these are a bit too large, what we're going to be doing is start cutting them down. So, for example, let's take 10, right? Let's say we're trying to test for a keyword length of 10. Doing a strategy, which we're going to go to later, if we test for a keyword of 10 letters, we are simultaneously testing for a keyword of 5 letters as well. And then again, if we try for 12, we're going to be trying for 6 at the same time, 8, and then 4, and so on. So we can try to go for a range and do a set of solutions where if we try for a certain amount of characters, we can get through a lot at once. So first, we can try starting with the keyword of eight letters so that we can get four and eight, right? We can get a keyword length of four and eight if we try that out. And then we can do six because 12 is very unlikely, but having a keyword of six characters is really common. And lastly, 10. So 10 is going to give us 5 and 10. So let's start doing our strategy and first test for a keyword length of 8 characters. So we're going to be splitting this right here into 8 different segments with 8 characters each. So we have 4 right here, another 4 right here, 8. We have 4 and 4, 8, 4, 4, 8, 4, 4, 8, 4, 4, 8. And that's it, right? So now our first step in this is going to be um, we're going to take this first character in segment number one and see that it says 86, right? So of what we're going to be doing with this number is we're going to be looking at the ones place. Let's see that it has six, right? So we're going to go to the first letter, right? And see that K1 is going to be six. We're going to mark that down, saying the first letter in this segment starts with six. So now let's go to the next segment, 55, right? That is going to be five. So we're gonna to go to the next one, K2, and mark it down for five. So this lets us know what set amount of like numbers in our Polybius table our keyword must be. For example, if we look at 103 right here, right? A number that has like 10, like it starts with a 10, 103 minus 10, won't get us a number that fits in this Polybius square. So right now we're trying to find a range of letters, I mean range of numbers, that will perfectly fit so that we get a number subtracted by our original one to fit in the Polybius square. So now I'm going to do this for the rest of them. So let's see, 49, K3, and it's going to go to 9. Next, 64, K4 to 4. And then 96, so we're going to have 6. 53, we're going to have 3. 45, we're going to have 5. And lastly, 75, we're going to have 5. So now I'm going to do it for the rest of its segments and rest of the numbers. So now that I did it for the rest of all... So now that I did it for the rest of the numbers, right, we can see that we, we get this type of table. So what we're li really looking at after we fill out this table is if it follows a certain rule. And that rule is the five space rule. So you're going to see if all of these X's go within five spaces of one another. Right here it works. Right here, only five spaces, right? Right here, another five, another five. So it seems like 
even if it's less, where our two x's, right? Right here, they're right next to each other. That still counts because it's within five spaces. So if we go and see all this is right, this one's right, this one's right. Something that would be wrong is like we had an x here and then all of a sudden we get another one right here. This is six spaces and it's not within each other. So since we know that these five, I mean these six, right, are wrong, so we know that what to do when it's right or wrong, we can see that a keyword of eight works, but we need to double check if four works. So let's say we tried for eight just now, right? This means that either four or eight could work and we need to try to see if how. But let's say we tried for four instead, right? This wouldn't mean that eight works, right? Because a segment of eight letters, right? Let's say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, does not work the same as just A, B, C, D, right? Two times, because those are different letters and different numbers mean different letters. So let's now try to go for a keyword of four. So we're gonna be doing the same strategy again, except see if it works for four. So I'm gonna erase all of this on our table and look for four. So now instead of having um, segments of eight, we're gonna be doing segments of four. So we're gonna split this all up and try for four. So if we first start with 86, we can see that it has six and then five and then nine and then four. And once again, we're gonna do this for the rest and I'll skip ahead once we have our entire table. All right, so now that we completed the table for our fours, we can obviously see that it works, right? We can see that a table of four works completely fine. So now we know that our keyword must be four characters long. So this is just for the ones place, so we're gonna have to do it again for the tens place. So I'm gonna cut this out and do it again for the tens place. So while I'm filling out this table, I wanna say that just because I have this table right here doesn't mean you can bring it to your regional or state tournament. So this is just so that we can learn, we can learn fast, and we can move on with this topic pretty easily, right? I don't wanna to waste too much of your time. So just knowing that whenever you do get to this type of cipher on your test, you're gonna to have to create your own table, not clean like this, but really easy, really easy to read, all of that. And make sure not to spend too much time writing out this table, because it's important to save as much time as you can, especially solving a tough cipher just like this. All right, so now that we found the mappings for our um, ones and tens digits, what we're gonna have to do now is run a formula. So this formula is going to be our highest digit, minus five is less than or equal to our possible mappings, which is gonna be like the possible mappings of like what our one value can be, what our tens values can be, and so on, is less than our lowest digit. So that formula right there, right, we're gonna run it for our first uh, row, our keyword of one with our ones place. So nine minus five is equal to four, is less than or equal to x, and then we're gonna put less than five. So this means x must be equal to four because four is less than or equal to four and four is less than five. So if we start making out a table with our possible mappings of our each keyword, right? K1, K2, K3, and K4, the letters in our keyword, let's put that out and know that our ones digit of our K1 must be four. Let's now do it for the tens. Nine minus uh, five is four. Four is less than or equal to X, which is less than five. So that means our K1, the first one must be 44. So now we're gonna do it for K2, K3, and K4. K2, six, five, one, one is less than or equal to X, X is less than two. So this means that it's gonna have to be one. And then if we do it for this one, five is less than or equal, I mean, five minus five is zero. So zero is less than or equal to X and then less than three. So this means K2, right? It can either be zero, it can either be one, or it can be two. But you can't subtract or have a keyword in your Polybius table equal to zero, one, right? So we can automatically say that it can't be zero, and instead we can put the possible mappings of one or two. We're not too sure about that. Let's do it for K3 now. It's gonna be the same as before with four. And then we're gonna do it for this one. So seven minus five is two. 
2 is less than or equal to x, less than 3. So k3 is 24. And lastly, k4. This one's going to be 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 is less than or equal to x, less than 2. k1, I mean k4 is 1, the 1's place. 9 minus 5 is 4. 4 is uh, less than or equal to x, which must be less than 0. So whenever you have a number like this, right, you can't have any number less than 0. So you're going to get rid of that 0 and instead go to the next smallest value, which is going to be 6. So this last one can either be 41 or, uh, I mean, sorry about that. It can either be 41 or 51. So we're going to put 4 or 5 for this. So that's going to be our possible mappings for our keyword. And we can now go back to our original cipher and start filling it all out. So our K1, right? K1, which is going to be 86. 86 minus 44 is 42. 55 minus, we're not sure, right? But we know it's 1 in the 1's place. This has to end in a 4. And then we have 49 minus 24, which is 25. 64 minus something 1. So it's going to just be 3 over here. And we're going to do it for all of them until we have all the numbers left. All right, so now that we subtracted all of our ciphertext by all of our possible keyword mappings, we get this set of numbers. Now, before we move on, this is going to be the end of part one, which is going to be deciphering like our possible mappings, looking at our Polybius table, and so on. And now we're going to go to part two, which is going to be shown on screen right now, which is where we're going to solve the rest of the cipher. So click the video that's shown on screen right now to take you to the next part.